So one last thing I want to talk about when we are solving systems of linear equations. Um, I want you to recall a homogeneous system, right? One in which all the constant terms are zero. So the systems of this form, this would be uh, a homogeneous system of m equations in n unknowns, right? There's n unknowns here, and there are m equations, and the constant terms are all zero, okay? so. One thing we know right away is every homogeneous system is consistent because all such systems have what we call the trivial solution, or just set all the variables equal to zero. Clearly, if x1, x2, x3, all the way to xn are all zero, then this will add up to zero each time, right? Each of these, regardless of these a31, a32, remember the coefficients. Um, if there are other solutions to the system, then they're called non-trivial solutions. So we can't have more than just the trivial solution. Here's some examples of a homogeneous systems. Okay. Um, and and so right since again every homogeneous system is consistent, either it has only the trivial solution. So one solution that it would have is always right this. Um, or two, the system has infinitely many solutions that include the trivial solution. So one option that's not here, notice, is no solution. You cannot have a situation where there's no solution because we always have the trivial solution. So the question is, is it the trivial solution only or is it the trivial solution plus infinitely many non-trivial solutions? Okay, so that is the question when we talk about homogeneous systems. Okay, when you're working with the Gaussian elimination, Gauss-Jordan elimination methods we just talked about in the last video. Notice no matter what row operation you do, that last column of all zeros, right, in that augmented matrix will never change. No row operation will change those zeros. Okay? So any row echelon form of a homogeneous system, the last column will be all zeros. That's real important. Now, I just want to close with a couple of uh, theorems relating to homogeneous linear systems and the first one is going to help us with the second one which is probably more important. The first one is if we have a homogeneous linear system with n unknowns, n variables, and if the reduced row echelon form of its augmented matrix has r non-zero rows, remember non-zero rows are just rows with the leading one, so another way of saying this has r leading ones, then the system n minus r no, sorry, then the system has n minus r free variables. Okay, so here's the proof uh, of this theorem real briefly. Why is this true? So as we said, there's r non-zero rows. So we must have r fixed variables. Because every um, non-zero row has one leading one and that leading one corresponds to the fixed variables. So every non-zero row has a leading one and every leading one corresponds to the fixed variables. Okay. Furthermore we know that if I take the fixed variables and I add the free variables, what do I get? I get the total number of variables. Variables are either fixed or free. What's the total number of variables? n. So fixed plus free equals n. We've already said the fixed variables is r, right? So therefore, the free variables we can solve for. r plus free variables equals n, then free variables is what? n minus r. Okay. That's the proof, okay? And a proof with a little box, okay? But there's the end of the proof, okay? Pretty, pretty simple. Now, um, and, and it makes sense, right? If you have, uh, if you have five variables and you have two non-zero rows, means two leading ones. You have two fixed variables. The remaining three variables must be free, right? They have to add up. Um, fixed and free have to have the total number of variables. Now, a homogeneous linear system with fewer equations than unknowns has infinitely many solutions. Now this is saying something. Remember we said for any homogeneous system, 
you can have the trivial solution only or infinitely many solutions in, in addition to the trivial solution. So what we're saying is if we have fewer equations than unknowns or more unknowns, more variables than equations, then we know the system has infinitely many solutions. But that's only if we're talking about homogeneous linear systems. Okay, so the previous theorem is going to come into play here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the number of equations, uh, I'm going to let that be equal to m. I'm going to have m equations. How many unknowns? I'm going to let that be equal to m. Since there's fewer equations than unknowns, so the proof will start with that. Okay, so I'll just have you note that m, the number of equations, is less than n, the number of unknowns. Okay, if I'm going to let r equal the number of fixed variables, sort of go along with what we did above, we called r the number of fixed variables in the previous proof, then what do we know? Well, the number of fixed variables, um, how, how many equations do we have? m, okay? Think about that. How many fixed variables can we have? Well, how many leading ones can we have? We can only have one leading one per row. One leading one per row. And each equation corresponds to a row, right? So that means that if there are m rows, the most you can have for leading ones is m. If every row has a leading one in it, that's the most you can have. But it could be that one row doesn't have a leading one. So the value of r is going to be less than or equal to the number of m, the number of equations, which m we already said is less than n. Right from here. And so this tells me I know that r, the number of fixed variables, is less than n, the number of unknowns, and therefore n minus r is greater than zero. n minus r, of course, is the number of free variables, right? That's what's left over. It means we have at least one free variable, right? And what does it mean if we have at least one free variable? That we have infinitely many solutions for any consistent system. And homogeneous systems are always consistent. If we have at least one free variable, one parameter, we're going to have infinitely many solutions. So again, this theorem does not apply to non-homogeneous linear systems. If we have fewer equations than unknowns, you know, more unknowns than, than equations, then um, it may not even be consistent. There may not be a solution. Um, But if it is consistent, then, then we, we could say that it has infinitely many solutions. So, so it's, a, it's a somewhat helpful thing. You can look by inspection. If I go back to these two, uh, this system here has three equations, three unknowns. I don't know. It can have only the trivial solution, or it could have infinitely many solutions. I don't know. But this one has, what, three equations, but how many unknowns? X sub four, four unknowns. It has, right, it does indeed have fewer equations than unknowns three equations versus four unknowns. So I know right away this system has infinitely many solutions. Okay? That, that could be helpful and by inspection. Okay? I still don't know exactly the form of those infinitely many solutions. I know the trivial solution plus infinitely many other solutions, but I don't know their form. I could find it by doing Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, but we know by inspection that that's the case. Okay, so that's just a little mop-up duty on the uh, homogeneous systems special case, uh, special uh, situation with systems of linear equations, and um, that ends our discussion on, a uh, very important discussion on Gauss, Gaussian elimination process. That algorithm is very important, we're going to use it throughout the course. Okay. Uh, our next uh, lecture, we're going to focus our attention on matrices, uh, not just augmented matrices, but matrices in and of, as objects in and of themselves. So they may not be associated with a system of linear equations. So we're going to talk about what else do we use matrices for, what, what do we do matrices for, and, and how we can do some matrix arithmetic and look at properties of matrices. So that's what we'll be doing coming up.